Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Truth, Love, Freedom podcast. I'm with my college brother, David. Now, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty all right, Matt. Ha- happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Of course. Could you tell me and the viewers a little bit about your younger life before you got into college? Well, for my younger life, uh, well, I've, I've always been interested in, like, engineering and stuff along those lines. Like, uh, when I was real little, I was really into, like, into trains and stuff like that. So, you know, I spent a lot of my time, like, reading about trains, learning about trains, just anything to do with them. And then, as I got older, I started to get into, like, Legos and video games and stuff, and then I started making the connection that, like, I really like putting things together and knowing how they work. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's about most of my early childhood, just kind of playing games, Legos, that sort of stuff. Hanging out with friends, you know, nothing super crazy. <laughs> Could you tell me and the viewers a little bit about your family? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I live with my mom and dad and my younger brother. And uh, I also have a roommate that's staying with me right now. They're a really close friend of mine. So that's pretty cool. Uh, kind of, I'm kind of blanking on. <laughs> Any college education within your family? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, both, of my, both of my parents went to college. Uh, my mom got a degree in, oh, what was it? Some, it's something, something computer related, but like, it was, it was something for like being a secretary, I think, but it was like along the lines of computer stuff. I don't even know if they offered a program like hers anymore. It was a while back, but uh, my dad went to Rutgers for law school, so he's a lawyer right now, so that's pretty cool. And as you know, we're I'm going for electrical engineering technology with you. <laughs> what made you, what pushed you to attend college? Was it mostly your family or you had a passion for electronics too, a mix of the both? It was a mix of my both. It was a mix of both, but it was definitely a lot of my parents pushing me to go to college because they were, they're very much of the belief like, yeah, you need to go to college to be successful, to make a name for yourself, which is like, that's, um, I don't think that's true personally, but they kept pushing me and they're helping me like work my way through it. So I figured like, eh, might as well, since I got the opportunity, it's a good one to have. And I'm fortunate enough to be in a position to where my family can help me pay for it. So like might as well try and take advantage of that and try to get a degree out of it. Hey man, me and David, we've had very similar college experiences. It's both of us fourth years on college. We're seniors right now. And we've known each other since our, our freshman year at RCSJ, I believe. I think so, we've yeah. Seen pe- we've seen each other around since then. Yeah. We even went to the same high school. I, don't, I just don't think we knew each other back then. You are um, a grade ahead of me. You graduated 2019? I graduated 2019, yeah. Oh, I didn't know you were 20. I didn't know you were 2020. Yes, so. Oh. What made you pick electrical engineering technology? Um, well, well, like I told you before, I was always interested in... Um, like engineering how things work putting them together that sort of thing and then later on in life i started really getting into video games computers that sort of thing so i kind of made the logical connection of well i like putting things together figuring out how they work and i also like computers and stuff so i'll i'll try pursuing electrical engineering technology just see how that goes and i'm a very hands-on person as well so that's why i went the uh, technician route rather than just theoretical electrical engineering so yeah about it <laughs> what was your experience like at the community college rcsj um if i'm being completely honest i feel like it could have been a little better i don't want to say that like the program was bad or anything but it's largely to do with with world events at the time am i allowed to say COVID on this podcast yeah go ahead <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah um yeah because i was i was at rcsj during COVID, so a lot of my classes were online, like through Zoom and stuff like that. And just given the nature of our field, since it's um, electrical engineering technology, that's a very hands-on application of engineering. So I feel like our experience kind of got a little neutered because we didn't get that hands-on experience. It was like, I had to take my Circuits 1 class through Zoom. And it's just like, at least for me personally, you're not going to get the same learning experience doing it on a screen than like doing it yourself like on an actual breadboard with wires resistors stuff like that you know like Uh, the simulations only get you so far i agree completely for our whole first year at college we basically did simulations instead of hands-on activities exactly the covid 
How was your transition to own university? Um, it was a, it was a little tough at first, but um, you know, the longer we've been there, I mean, kind of gotten the gist of things, how it goes. So it's not too bad now, but at the beginning, it definitely was a little stressful for me because like I was in a bad relationship at the time as well, so that also kind of made it a little harder. But you know, it happens. But got through it. Me and uh, David, we're graduating in May. Are you excited to graduate? I'm very excited to graduate. I'm counting down the days until we don't have to be at that school anymore. Looking forward to just getting out there and getting that like actual engineering job. What have you learned about yourself through your experience as a college student? I think I think what college has taught me the most is like how to be diligent and independent on your own because, like you know, all throughout elementary school middle school high school it's like you always have someone like guiding you telling you like when stuff's due when to do stuff at a certain time like you know pretty much like guiding your life for you whereas in college it feels like they let you loose a little more and like if there's a problem or something you need fixed or like just whatever it might be it's it's more on you so i guess i've learned more about independence and self-worth and just like how to manage my own life a little better but yeah, it's definitely helped prepare me for the real world more than county college did i think for sure has this whole college experience overall has it been hard for you easy has it felt like a joke uh or it's mix all three. it's definitely fluctuated between all three and that's mostly just because it varies by the classes and the fact that our program is so new, and I don't know if you've talked about this on the podcast before, but our program is ridiculously new. We are the guinea pigs of this program, essentially. There's only four of us in total, so they're kind of, like, even the school is still kind of figuring out how things go as we're in it. So some classes have been easy, some have been ridiculously hard, and some have just been a joke, like you said. So it's been a bit of a mix. <laughs> Have you ever thought about giving up on college along the way? Many times, but like I said earlier, my, my folks um, are nice enough and I'm fortunate enough to be in a situation where they're willing to help me because I know a lot of people aren't in a situation where they can afford to go to college or whatever the case may be. So it's just like, no matter how much I wanted to quit, it almost felt like being rude to my parents by just quitting on them, you know? So, so pretty much, yes. I've wanted to quit before, but I don't want to because I don't want to disappoint my parents. I want to make them proud. <laughs> I felt that. Yeah. Do you have an idea for the type of job you would want to have after you graduate? Uh, I, I, have, I have a rough idea, generally, of kind of what I'm into. Uh, I'm really into PCB design, and um, I also I also really like AI development. I think that's really interesting. It's like uh, me and one of my friends, we actually took an AI class. You had an AI clinic, too, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, so... It's, I don't know, it's just really interesting, and since it's like its own emerging technology, it's a field where there's going to be a lot of job positions opening up in the near future, so if I can get ahead of the curve on that and kind of like get a better idea of AI and just learn it a little bit more in my free time, I think maybe something like that would be a good direction to go to. It's kind of what I'm looking at right now. But if not, you know, just something along the lines of like CAD design, PCB design would be fine too. Could you tell the viewers about what you designed in that AI class? <laughs> uh, in the AI class, we made a generative adversarial network that generates uh, anime character faces. Uh, we, what we did was we gave it a data set that we found online. It had like 35,000 images of anime faces. And what our uh, adversarial network did was it would go through that data set and then it would try to create its own anime characters based on the images we gave it. So that was pretty cool. Um, it was far from a perfect project, though. It ran into a couple issues where, like, it wouldn't generate things properly. It would run into something called mode collapse a lot, but I won't go in-depth on that here. <laughs> but, but yeah, that's it was, pretty, it was a pretty cool project, and it's something I would definitely like to explore more, maybe in a more serious context, <laughs> not something so silly. And for the people out there that don't know what a PCB board is, could you tell them a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, uh, a PCB board is, if you've ever opened a computer, um, pretty much that giant green chip that connects everything, like a motherboard, that's essentially a PCB. 
it's just it's just a means of connecting a lot of wires into one solid object that you can also like solder bits to. So like you could solder like like USB ports, LEDs, resistors, whatever you need on it, all just like in one convenient board. What do you currently do as your job now? Uh, my current job is anything but engineering. Uh, I <laughs> I work at a liquor store right now, which isn't very glamorous for my major, but you know. A means to end. Do you have any funny stories with that job? Oh, oh, do I have stories about the liquor store? Uh, we had, there was one time where this lady came in really late at night. She looked like she was going through withdrawal or something. And she went into the whiskey aisle and she was acting a little suspicious. So we were kind of just like, what is she doing? And then we got a better look at her. We saw she had a bottle of 10 high whiskey and she was pouring it into a Chick-fil-A cup, making herself a drink in the middle of the store. So there was that. We also, we, uh, this one is also more recent. Uh, we had one dude come in, managed to steal a whole 24 pack of Corona, which I don't even know how you managed to sneak that out of the store, <laughs> but he did somehow. But yeah, most of my funny stories at Joe Canals boil down to idiots trying to steal stuff or just people being hilariously ignorant. <laughs> Did you ever have an internship you got through college? Um, I got a... I don't know if it was considered an internship, but I was a temp employee at a plastic manufacturer... Or not a plastic manufacturer, I'm sorry. At a plastic warehouse for a while. Uh, I got that through one of, one of our professors at the county college. And that job was really cool because that was actually just, like, a technician job. So I was, I was getting to do all the hands-on stuff, like, like building units... Um, like we had the, we had these units called, uh, roller racks and they were, they were these big structures that you would use to, um, well, what they would do is they would have these long cylinders that they would have cell growth in, right? And what it would do is it would rotate them so that the cells, uh, don't clump to the walls. But yeah, I got to build stuff like that. I got to build electric pumps and it was all through the school. Uh, but I was just a temp employee and I did get laid off ironically because of my school schedule. So a little frustrated about that. So that's probably the closest thing to an internship I've had. So your school schedule, you had a new semester of school, and that semester was so packed up with hours that you lost the job that you got through the school? Pretty much, yeah. Well, the way my schedule worked was they wanted me to work there like like eight-hour days, which is fine, but just like you said, with how packed my schedule was, and I mean, you've seen it firsthand as well, how they'll just put uh, classes at like weird times. I couldn't fulfill that eight hour day that they wanted, so I could only work like one day a week. And I think that's ultimately why they canned me, because I could only work one day a week. I was a temp employee, and at the department there wasn't a lot of work going on either, because there just weren't a lot of orders for whatever reason. So it's like, I understand why the company let me go, but it's, it was just kind of a frustrating situation to be stuck in. Because it's like, oh, school got me here, and now school got me out of here. <laughs> Does school um, often get in the way of your life? Um, some sometimes, but not too too bad for me. Fortunately, I don't know. I'm not I'm not a very like social outgoing person for the most part, so it hasn't really affected me too too much uh, in that regard. What do you do in your free time when you're not at school? Uh, in my in my free time, I I'm very passionate about video games and art mostly. Like, I love that kind of stuff. Like, um, like drawing especially is uh, the form of art that I'm most interested in. I have an iPad with Procreate. I love doing the digital art. I dabble in animation sometimes as well. And then video games, yeah, I'm also really passionate about that. I love collecting them, learning about the history of them. I think they're an art form as well, so I think it's kind of cool to just have shelves of games and preserve that sort of stuff, you know? What is your favorite gaming system? As of right now or of all time? Uh, we could do both. Okay. Uh, oh, that's. Oh, I made this question harder for myself. <laughs> uh, I would say right now I play my Nintendo Switch a lot, so that's probably my favorite. I I love Nintendo games, especially. I feel like they have a super interesting history, and there's, and a lot of them are just really good games too. So yeah, the Nintendo Switch is probably my favorite right now, and then for like all time. probably torn between like the gamecube or the wii honestly like they just have some banger games on them 
I knew you were going to say the GameCube, dude. Oh, yeah? <laughs> that was a great game system. Oh, yeah. A lot of classics on that. What got you into playing video games at the beginning? Um, it was originally, um, it was originally my cousin, who's older than me, uh, back when we were real young, uh, me and him would bond a lot over playing his, his brother's hand-me-down N64 a lot. We would, we, we would be playing the original Super Smash Bros. on the N64 in his basement all the time. So I have a, I have a lot of nostalgic memories with that that I cherish. And that, that's, that was like my initial exposure to it. And when I was younger, uh, my mom was really into computer games at the time. So, like, she showed me the original Doom to, like, a seven-year-old. <laughs> so, I was like, oh, shit, this game with demons getting killed? This is cool. So, it was that, Super Smash Bros. on the N64, and the rest is history, really. <laughs> Those two things are really what stand out to me the most. What was the first gaming system that you owned? The first gaming system I owned was back in 2006 when the Wii was the craziest thing on the market everybody wanted one and my dad was a real one and he waited in a long line in front of a walmart to get one for me when i was little so that, that's a, that's another one of those like core gaming nostalgic memories for me getting getting that original wii when it was like nobody could get one i was like oh my god this is so cool played like wii sports for hours super mario galaxy new super mario brothers like all the all those classic games but yeah, that was my first system that I owned personally. Speaking of core memories, what are some of the best video game playing memories you have? Some of the some of the best memories I have with games, uh, well, like I said earlier, the nostalgia with Super Smash Bros. on the N64 with my cousin. Uh, I cherish a lot of those memories a lot. And uh, in more recent years, like 2012, 2013, like I bought Minecraft back then. And that game really was revolutionary. Still is to this day, honestly. But I have so many memories attached to that game as well. Like, going on random servers, making friends with complete strangers. Just, you know, just chilling with my boys. Just playing on our own worlds. It's just, there, there's there's too many to list with Minecraft. But that was that's truly a, a game that, like, is special to me. For sure. Are there any big achievements or any um, big games that you won that you never thought you would get to the winning cutscene at the end? Oh, uh, not really, because, I don't know, I mean, every game is beatable at a certain point, you know? Might not be fair, but every, well, most games are beatable, and there's, there's not really one where I, like, I never thought I would get to the end of it, but there are definitely some where I was just like, oh my god, it took me forever to get to this point. I don't know how familiar you are with, like, Japanese role-playing games, but the game Persona 5, that game is over 100 hours to beat it completely, and I did that. <laughs> so that was quite a time sink, but it was an amazing game. Definitely worth it. What is your favorite video game to play overall? If you could only play one video game for the rest of your life, what would it be? Oh, well, my favorite game of all time is Super Mario Galaxy on the Wii, but that's linked more to nostalgia than anything. As for a game that I could play constantly, never get sick of, probably Minecraft. There's just so much to do in it. <laughs> Keep building forever. Mm -hmm. Do you think video games are a good and fun way to escape the monotony of everyday life? Absolutely. Very much so. Honestly, when, when I come home from school, if I don't have homework to do or like any responsibilities to attend to, I'm probably playing a game. It's like just Switch, PS5, whatever, just chilling, playing a bunch of different stuff. And you mentioned this, but I'm going to ask it again. Yeah, go for it. Uh, have you ever met friends through playing video games, and what kind of friends, what kind of friendship did that turn into? Oh, uh, yeah, um, video games are a, a fantastic social platform in that regard. Um, I mean, our our friend Luke at school, actually, like, me and, me and him got a lot tighter from playing games together. Like we like we played a lot of Call of Duty, Minecraft, that sort of stuff, and really got to know each other a lot more that way as well. Because I don't know, games almost act as like a good social platform as well. So yeah, there's like there was Luke I got real tight with, and then some of my some of my buddies from like way back in the day, like we would hop on Xbox 360, play Black Ops 2, party of like five or six of us, all just all just chat and just having a good time. But yeah. Were they like middle school days, like 
playing in that. Um, yeah, it was middle school days. Yeah. A whole bunch of squeaker 12-year-olds playing <laughs> Black Ops 2. Good times. <laughs> oh, yeah. Very very nostalgic. <laughs> what are some of the best gl- games to play with other people? I, I feel like I could say Minecraft and Call of Duty for a lot of these, so I'll try to deviate from that. Uh, Super Smash Bros. is a great one. Uh, Mario Party is another good one. Uh a more niche favorite of mine is called Ultimate Chicken Horse, if you've never heard of that game. No, I haven't. What is it about? It's it's a really fun game. It's a it's a co-op uh, platforming game where it's a really simple goal. You you have a starting point, and then there's an end point. But the whole gimmick is is that each round, you have to place a block like on the map to try and make a path to the end, but at the same time, like screwing over the other players, if that so makes like sense. like blocking their path. Yeah, but you still have to be able to complete it too. So you have to like figure out, okay, how am I going to screw them over, but make it so I can still get to the end. So it's it's a very fun game that's like way more in depth than you would think it is. It's a lot of fun. I've had many many hours playing that game with friends. <laughs> have you ever done a gaming podcast? No, I have not. Something I've considered, but I I don't really have enough people to start one with. It's really. The only reason why it happens. And maybe one day me, you, and Luke start a gaming podcast. Yeah, that'd be tight. I'd be down. Are video games a good way to maintain old friendships? Absolutely. For sure. Like, I I have some friends that I go, like, months, sometimes years without talking to. But, like, every once in a while, you'll just get that message on Discord from your boy from, like, a year ago. Just be like, hey, you want to play some games? And it's like, I don't know, it's, it's a good way, it's a very good way to keep in touch with people, definitely. If it wasn't for video games, do you think you would have became an electrical engineering technician? I don't know if I would have done electrical specifically, um, because it really, it was, it was my passion for learning about, like, video games and computers and stuff that really drove me to do what I'm doing now. If video games were out of the picture, I might still have gone the engineering route, but maybe not electrical. I think I might have leaned a little bit more towards mechanical, I think. I agree completely. Yeah. Last question. If you could give some advice to young adults debating whether they should go to college, what advice would you give them? Um, I would say it really depends on your financial situation because i feel like in college or not even in college in high school there's a stigma that like when you graduate you have to go to college or you'll be a failure and that's just not the case like you can make it on your own not going to college but i'm not gonna sit here and act like not having a degree is better because i mean the way i look at it is that a degree is essentially just an easy pass for life you know (laughs) So, it's good to have one, but it is by no means necessary, I don't think. It's really just, how much easier do you want to make your life later on? If you can afford it, of course. Of course, and if you have people behind you backing you up financially, then you oh, yeah, definitely. probably should take that chance, right? Oh yeah, for sure. And you, you definitely need people to support you as well, because like, college is kind of intimidating to take on by yourself. It was like before I was real tight with you guys, like it was it was a lot harder for me personally. But now that like we're all a lot tighter with each other, a lot more cool, it's definitely made it a lot easier for me personally. And I feel like other people going into college should definitely keep that in mind as well. It's like have people that support you and like are friends with you in college because it will make it a lot easier. Thank you so much for doing this podcast with me, David. Yeah, sure thing. It It was a lot of fun. We'll definitely do another one once we all graduate. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Looking forward to that. Hope all you viewers have a great day, and I'll see you again tomorrow.